Hello, my name's Keith and I'm known as the Florida Stone Man and today I'm making a video to you from the middle of the ocean. I'm just levitating in the ocean. I'm kidding, I'm, I'm actually on rocks right now, so how cool. This is a beautiful video uh, spot to talk to you about this topic that I'm going to be talking to you about today. Is be careful of fake Christians or Christians in disguise. And I've been really taking a lot of time to think about this because I sometimes, this is just such an in deep, in depth topic I have to talk about. I've just been wrapping my mind around it because I've came to a realization as of very recently to some very shocking information based on what God has shown me. So there's people online who says Jesus loves you. And those people come from a sincere place, a very beautiful place in their heart. And there's certain people online that will say Jesus loves you. And you feel like there's something off. It's like, I, why would this person say Jesus loves you to me when you know Jesus loves you, but you have like a strange feeling in your stomach versus you, you don't feel that love. It's because some people will come in disguise to get your guard dropped down. That is how, uh, that's the Trojan War Horse. It is the ultimate Trojan War Horse. It's how you get past someone's defenses, is to pretend to be like them. Get them to drop their guard. I'm gonna give you a very, I'm gonna start this off with a very specific example. God, I mean, the devil knows that if he approaches people uh, with, as himself, or something that's very obvious to be him, and that's why they call him the false light in the Bible, uh, the thing is, you have to know he's gonna be very clever and sneaky when sneaking up to you. Same thing with the serpent in the Garden of Eden. It wasn't a scary beast, it was a snake. So uh, the screaming is confirmation. <laughs> there's people in the water and they just stepped on something hopefully not a snake but it's florida be an alligator uh, <laughs> but in my tiktok live i had someone say in the live and some of the people watching this video were actually in the live at the time so if you're in the live comment below but you know who i'm talking about there's a woman who basically said i would like you to stop teaching about the bible i i came to you to learn about crystals stop teaching this and then she said some bad stuff stop teaching this like this is this is not what i came to follow you for this is not what i'm looking for i didn't come to i didn't come to you to go to church and she started saying this stuff and i'm like you must be out of your mind and she immediately changed moods once i like i'm like are you kidding me are you kidding me i will never i mean i was just like for someone to have that kind of audacity like stop teaching the bible like instead of her leaving alive and instead of her going on her merry way, there was something in her. Think about it like this. There was something in her telling her, stop teaching this. This is like, uh, no one wants to hear this. And she tried to like mute my message. Actually, since then, I've been teaching about 10 times more of the Bible. Because I'm like, okay, this is a message that I need to teach. But the story gets really interesting here. She went quiet for a little bit and lied. And then a little while later, came back and she was preaching messages of Jesus Jesus loves you and it was and I she didn't even change the profile picture she didn't change her picture at all Jesus loves you and then she started sharing messages from the Bible she must have googled them or something on her must have been sharing stuff I'll give you another stuff a, a little something a little bit later on but uh she's like Jesus loves you all you need is Jesus put down the crystals uh, don't i mean just you don't need crystals all you need is jesus jesus wouldn't want this someone who was telling me to stop saying the word jesus stop saying the name jesus and talk stop talking about the word of the bible i was just shook i was just like it's the most eye-opening thing i've ever seen when it comes to other christians other christians and i have not looked at a single comment ever again the same way so this person was pulling up scripture and like this person was legitimately trying to get me to stop teaching about the Bible, to stop teaching about Jesus. And now all of a sudden, within a couple of minutes, uh, five to ten minutes, I don't know how much time went by because I was teaching. But this person became like, like a now saved. 
Now a completely different person. That had to have been the, if that if this story doesn't wake you guys up, and there was multiple people in that live. It's it was probably the most. It just made me ponder things differently. Like I don't even. That was the biggest like one of the biggest things I've ever seen. Like that that switch up was so fast and so real. And actually, this is the most. This is very important. She got a lot of people in the live when she was sharing the messages. She was like, uh, she was starting off very friendly. Like, God loves you all. Uh, put Jesus first. Everyone's like, oh, Amen, oh, Amen. People were. She was getting people like, and yeah, of course, oh, Amen to that. But at first, when I, I didn't even pay attention to her name or her picture because I was reading questions. And I'm like, there's something a little bit off here. You could just read by intention when someone says Jesus loves you. It's like, that's from a place of love or that's from a place of, oh, okay, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get over on you. So right after that, all these people were like, oh, man, I'm in. I'm like, yes, it's good. Those are messages of love, but not a person coming from a place of love. So you have to think about it like this. The devil knows that he can't be obvious. Like, that's obviously like, if you're trying to beat against the gate, of someone who has God behind them. God's going to remove that person from the front of the gates, like like an ancient city, like the, uh, like Rome, like in ancient Greece, and any ancient e Egyptian civilization, when you have the gates, banging at the gates, he just gets you shot at and fired at, like arrows being sent down. So for that person to like go back and just really just ponder, I, I'm just like, this, this leads me into awe. This is like the, the cool, I mean, the most interesting thing I've shared about a fake, I mean, fake Christians pretty much, false Christians, is that the devil 100% knows that you have God at your back. So the best way is to sneak inside. And since, because I 100% know that God has sent that person in live to kind of reveal what kind of people are out there. And then I've been seeing in certain comment sections, it starts off, Jesus loves you. God is good. And they, they share some beautiful stuff. People agree with them. And you click re the reply thread. You, you go down to the, the entire reply thread. And it gets dark. It's like Jesus. Uh, and then they start shoving words in people's mouths. They start passing judgment. They're like, oh, it's not judgment. But it's just, but. Remember the famous word, but. So, and then division occurs. I came up with a little uh, a saying if that person's decision was division, then God will be their judgment. It was supposed to rhyme. I, I, if division was their decision, then God, their judgment is God's decision. Oh, there we go. Okay, thank you. But that, that, that rhyme just sticks with me as well. Because some people, they'll just, they'll look to sneak in sneak in a little bit like just kind of disguise themselves and then they'll rip everyone apart that's what you guys have to watch out for and it's happening so much some people don't legitimately one two three four five six. Ooh, 11 birds flew over <laughs> i'll teach about that soon but and yes i count birds when they fly over but uh they're long gone uh but this is such and for 11 birds, Psalm 91, 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Ask God. So the biggest thing you can do in this scenario is to ask God to cast out false lights. The Antichrist, when he comes, will be the biggest false light and people will, only true people of God will feel it in two places. Their heart, which is their soul, essentially, and their stomach, their solar plexus chakra. So if you ever are trying to discern if someone's coming from a place of love teaching about God, because that's what it's about in the end of the day. There are people online, and I've talked to my angels about this. Some people are only preaching certain only certain parts of the Bible, and they have no intention of teaching about the true message of the Bible, which is moving people closer to God with love. If you have someone who is fixated on certain parts of the Bible just to get people away from each other. It doesn't matter what part of the Bible it is. And they're talking about nothing with Jesus, nothing with God's love. It could be, and this is how people use the Bible in politics. And I've been seeing that in politics recently. They have nothing to do. Absolutely. 
not a balloon. Oh, that's shameful. Uh, there's, they have nothing to do with the message that the Bible offers of God's love and moving closer to God. Instead, it's leverage, it's control, it's fear. You're gonna go to hell when you die. Like, it's, and you better, and these people have not even looked into the Bible. Hell is not what you think it is. Look at, find the words hell in the Bible. I dare you to research it. It's not what you think. It's, that's, once you actually research what, what hell actually is, you understand the afterlife much better. It's not just hell. It's Sheol. It's, and there's, there, that's for you to research because there's not, it's not just hell. It's not just one place. There's levels to it. Just like there's levels in heaven, there's layers in heaven, there's layers of hell. And these people who are trying to disguise themselves as a, a sheep, a sheep in a wolf's clothing, a wolf in sheep's clothing, that's how you take out the flock. That's another, that's a, that's a really good one. A wolf in sheep's clothing. Because these people will have their guard, like their, their guard will drop. This like, okay, and that's how actually you relate to people. That's how you relate to people when you go to church. That's how you relate to people in general. It's like, the biggest part of my life is God. And a lot of you, it's the same exact thing. So when you encounter someone else, who comes from the same messages you're reading, or, or not reading because some of these people are just saying certain messages that are not even in the Bible, but, and the Bible's getting twisted now. What do I mean twisted? I'll make a different post about this coming up. But people are taking the Bible and shortening it. That's how the original translation from all the stages in time got to how they are now. People on Instagram, they're saying, basically, I mean, Instagram specifically, on TikTok, Instagram, they'll take a long Bible quote and they'll want people to understand it much quicker so they'll shorten it. Ask and it shall be given, seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto thee. For everyone who asketh receiveth him, and seeketh findeth him, and knock and it shall be opened unto him. It's a whole verse in the Bible and then someone will condense it and say, oh, uh, Matthew 7, 7, 8 says that if you ask God for anything, it's yours. Uh, and they'll just shorten it. They'll say they, that's the entire verse. They'll shorten it when they don't actually put the exact quote. So, and people start bending and twisting stuff, and they start using it in their favor. So watch where people go. And a lot of these people who are giving advice on the Bible, like these people are like and the most dangerous kind of person, which I talked about in my shorts or in my video, is the just pray person. That person is just praying themselves, but they're. Uh, more so being prayed to the enemy. If you are someone, and I'll tell you when to just pray in a second. If you are someone who would like to achieve something in life, let's just say you would like to be a designer. Let's just say you want to go to the gym and you're like, okay, I, these people, the logic behind them is I don't have to do anything. I don't have to do anything to get what I want. And you shouldn't, you don't have to do anything yourself. Just pray. That is a very dangerous thing to say because if you're not taking any action, you're not having any deeds, and you're telling people, don't, no, stop taking action. You stop taking action once you've done everything you possibly can do to move yourself closer to God, to move yourself closer to where you wanna be, what your goal is. So just telling people to just pray, look where that person is in life. I guarantee, I 100% guarantee you would not trade places with that person because that person's not coming from an elevated standpoint. Now, in essence, and when do you pray? Like I said, once you've done everything, James 2.17 and James 2.18, it says, faith without works is dead. That means you can have all the faith in the world, but you're asking God to do your day for you, but you haven't gotten out of bed. You're asking God to help your muscles grow, but you won't go into the gym. You want to lose weight, but you won't change your diet. You want to achieve. Let's just say you want to have the, uh, you want to be the best artist there is, but you won't even pick up a paintbrush. You're just praying. Those people are being prayed to the devil by telling you to be idle. Just not do anything. Just have faith and to fail all God's tests. You, we come here to do deeds. What is my message? Be careful who you listen to. These Christians are not actual Christians sometimes. Sometimes it's the enemy in disguise. They, the enemy knows if he can look like you and if he can sound like you and talk like you, birds of a feather, what's the term? Birds in the feather flock in a coop. 
I forget the, the actual, uh, because there's a different way to say that, but birds of a feather stick together. Okay, there we go. Uh, so basically, that's how your enemy, I mean, that, that's how the enemy and your enemies essentially will drop your guard is by pretending to be one of you and getting you to be idle, getting you away from God by putting you in a very dark place, by giving advice that's not going to help you and it's not, it's contrary to what the Bible actually says. So when do you know when to listen to someone? Once you've read your holy book. Once you know, once you know in your heart, mind, and soul, once that what the person says is something they're practicing themselves, when it has worked out for themselves, when it has moved them to God, closer to themselves, but make sure you're not just going off of what else someone says, because this is how most people get corrupted by pastors, is because a lot of pastors, and people are like, no, pastors are perfect. Maple syrup. Okay, just look that up. People, just because someone's a pastor doesn't mean they're free of sin. And people are just, they just drop their guard. I, I, I won't even go into pastors in this video. People will flat out drop their guard and the enemy will sneak in because he knows. Once he's a sheep and wolf's clothing, that's how he gets you. Once he can't get into the gates because God is guarding them, that he becomes the Trojan war horse and infiltrates from within. That's the problem with the church today. That's the problem with most Christians today. But how do you stay a true Christian? How do you stay, like, how do you watch out for this kind of person? Ask God to dispel the veils. Oh, Holy Father, Creator of Heaven and Earth, Lord Jesus Christ, dispel the veil of anyone who's trying to be a fake Christian, anyone who's trying to use you to get to me. So might it is, and so shall it be. Okay, that's a mini prayer you can say. Uh, you can pray that after some of your prayers. Uh, Matthew 7, 7, 8, then you ask that. God, I'm asking you to please dispel the veils, because these people will be so convincing that you they'll be around you for about a couple of years until you know like oh this person doesn't actually care about moving themselves closer to god they're just whole oh. but in essence um any questions ask them in the comment section i won't be redundant i'll keep this video nice and short until then i'll see you guys next time make sure you check out floridastoneman.com the water is uh no wonder my angels are yelling uh it's starting to pull up so i'm gonna get out of here bye ciao